Hi everyone, this is John Fenari from the Sociology Department at Queens College. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to enter and modify data using Google Sheets. I'm going to start off in my Google Drive account. Now I could just go here and choose New and create a new Google Sheet, but I'm actually going to pick up where I left off with the previous file. So I'm going to open this file called John Sample Sheet. And you'll notice that this sheet, this file has data in sheet one and data in sheet two. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a new sheet. So I'm going to go here, add a sheet, and that becomes sheet three. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete sheets one and two because I don't want them anymore. And the way I do that is I just click on the little arrow there next to sheet one and I choose delete. It asks me if it gives me a warning here to let me know that I'm deleting the sheet and I choose OK. And I'm going to get rid of sheet two also. So now I'm here in sheet three and I have a clean sheet. And I'm going to create uh, a little data file here and I'm going to uh, look at some test scores from some students. So. I'm going to start here in cell C3 and create some headers. Count, student's name, and the exam score. I'm going to start here under name and create some names. next to these students' names, I'm going to give some exam scores. And here, next to count, I just want to count the students uh, starting from 1 to 7. So I could just enter 1 and go down and hit 2 and go down and hit 3. And there's only 7 here, so it wouldn't take that long. But I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to do 1 and 2. And I'm going to use the fill handle to continue the series. So I highlight the one and two, and you see this little tiny blue box under the bottom right corner too. I can click on that and drag it down, and Google will go ahead and fill the series for me. So it figures out that I started with one and two, and it guesses that I want to continue with three, four, five, six, and seven. I can do this with um, letters A, B, C. I could do this with um, days of the week. If I start with Monday and Tuesday and click and fill it down, it will continue with Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and pick back up and uh, go right back to Monday and continue. So I have my three headers here, count, name, and exam, and I have some data there. And they say, oh man, I, I, maybe I should have started this in, in row one instead of row three. Well, we can easily get rid of these first two rows by highlighting row one and two, right clicking, and it's going to say, you're going to give me the option here to delete rows one and two. So if I delete rows one and two, now my headers are in row one. If you decide that you didn't want to delete those rows, you can always undo by using the undo button here in the shortcut bar. So if I hit undo, it brings those rows back. If I decide, no, wait, I did want to get rid of them, I can hit the redo button, and it will redo that delete. I'm also going to delete columns A and B because maybe I want to start this data all the way in the top left corner. So I highlight columns A and B, right click, and I have an option here that says delete columns A to B. I'm going to show you another, a uh, couple other tricks here. Uh, what if we decide we want to add a column in between column B and C? Well, that's easy enough to do. I can right click on column C and I can choose the option that says insert one left. Or I can right click on column B and choose the option that says insert one right. Either way, I'll end up with a new empty column between column, what was column B and C. Column C moves to column D, and now I have this empty column C. I'm going to add another column header here called gender. 
and I'm going to go ahead and enter everybody's gender. So Ben is a male and Ray is a female. And I can go ahead and enter each one of these manually. Uh, and again, there's only seven here, so it's not that time consuming. But if you had 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 or 60 or 100, uh, you may want to copy and paste. So I can copy and paste this cell that says male, right click and choose copy, and then highlight all these other individuals that I know are males and right click and paste. That's one time saver. I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to put Poe down as a male. And before we use the fill handle to continue a series, we can also use the fill handle to uh, copy a series. So if I choose male, and I know that the next one, two, three are also going to be male, I can choose that little button that's the fill handle, the little uh, blue square on the bottom of that cell, choose it and just drag it down, and it will copy what was in that first cell. So now I've got everybody down as a male and Leia is a female. I could either enter that manually or I'm just going to copy and paste from here. I want to show you a few other tricks. What if I wanted to add a, a row above this data to give it a title? Well, I'm going to go ahead and right click on row one and insert one above and that gives me this new row and I want to put a title right here over the center but you notice if I put the title here it's going to put it all the way to the left well I can cut and paste it maybe it'll look better there maybe it'll look better there it doesn't really fit anywhere if I want it centered. And what if the title was longer than just the word title? Well, I'm going to delete what's in that cell. I'm going to show you a trick. We can take a series of cells that are connected, so cells that are connected side by side or uh, horizontally or vertically. And I'm going to take click on cells A1 through D1. And I'm going to go to the shortcut toolbar here. And there's this uh, tool button here called Merge Cells. I choose that and it now made one big long cell and I can put the title here and I'm going to give it a, a longer title uh, Star Wars Students Grades. And now I have a title that fits over the data. There's some other things I can do such as format these cells to make them look a little nicer. So I can choose this cell and say, well, I want to center it. There is an option for centering in the cell. It's also on the shortcut bar. And it is over here, the horizontal alignment. And when I click on that, it gives me three choices. I can have left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned. I'm going to choose center aligned, and it centers that title right in the center of that cell. And that cell is the width of the four uh, columns of data that I have. I can highlight other cells and center them the same way. Or I can highlight the entire file by clicking over here in this spot right here to the left of A and above 1, that highlights the entire cell, and if I choose the center option, it will put all the data in the center of every cell that it's in. I can also resize columns and rows. For example, I can auto size column A by hovering the cursor over the border between columns A and B, and just double clicking and it will automatically adjust the size of that column. Or I can click on it and shrink the size of that column to however narrow I want or however wide I want it to be, depending on how much information is there and what I want that column to look like. I can also adjust the height of a row by clicking on the border between two rows 
and adjusting the height that way. I'll show you one other way to do some centering. If you have a, a cell that is the row has been adjusted, you can also center up and down within the row. So this is the um, horizontal align. This would be the vertical align. And I can choose to align it to the top of the cell or the center of the cell or the bottom of the cell. I'm going to put that in the center of the cell. I can also make this look a little nicer by maybe um, bold, making the the title bold. And I can in, even increase the size of the title. The font size can be adjusted by also in the shortcut bar going over to the font size and increasing the font. So here I'll increase it from 10 to 18. I can also put a border around this data. I'm going to highlight all the data on the little table that I've created. Go over here to the shortcut bar where it says borders. And I'm going to choose this first, this uh, all borders option. It's the first one in the top left. And that will put a border around all the data in this file. Another trick for making the information look nice is changing the color. We can change the color of the font by selecting a cell or multiple cells. I'm going to choose the title and go over here to the shortcut bar and change the text color from black to blue. Now I have a blue title. And I can also change my headers. I can choose multiple cells. I'll highlight all my headers and change the text color from black to red. You can also change the background. So I'll change the background of this table by highlighting all the cells in the table and I'll go here where it says fill color and I'm going to make it a light gray color. One other pretty cool trick is the ability to make charts and graphs from this data. I'm going to start off by just creating a simple pie chart from the variable gender. So I'm going to highlight the gender column here. So that the seven cells with the gender data plus the one cell with the header. And I'm going to go over here to insert and chart. And based on the data that I have selected, Google has determined that the best chart available would be a pie chart, and I would agree. Although if you don't agree with the option, it will give you some other options to choose from. But I like the pie chart. It gives me a nice visual representation of the gender distribution. And if I like what I see there, I can hit Insert. And then I can move that chart over here. Now I've deleted the chart so I can show you one last function in Google Sheets and that is to demonstrate how to do mathematical functions and formulas. So I have this variable here, exam score, and I have some exam scores and I'm going to highlight them so that I can calculate some basic descriptive statistics about the exam scores. I'm going to go over here to the shortcut bar, and the last shortcut bar function or button here is the functions button. I'm going to choose that, and I have some options here. The first one I'm going to hit or select is count. And it puts a formula here, and I'm just going to hit enter on my keyboard, and it gives me a count. So that tells me that there are seven data elements here. I have seven exam scores. I also want to know the sum and the average. So I'm going to add some uh, titles here. We'll call this the count and the sum and the average. And I'll highlight this in a different color so that we know that these are um, statistics about the data and not the actual data. Maybe we'll make them a light blue color. So in this next cell, I want to get the sum of these seven scores. So I'm going to choose 
this time I'm not selecting the values, I'm just selecting the cell. I'm going to choose the functions button again, and I'm going to ask for the sum. And I get this weird box here. And essentially what they want me to what it wants me to do is tell it which values I want the sum of. So I'm just going to select these seven values and hit enter. And now it has calculated the sum for me. So the sum of these seven values is 585. Well, I'm going to calculate the average the same way. Or I could calculate the average the same way by choosing average and then selecting the cells and hitting enter. I'm going to undo that and show you another way. We can calculate our own formula here by clicking in the cell, enter in the equal sign, and then I can select the sum and then the slash sign, which is the symbol for division, and then select the count and hit enter. And that will give me the average. So essentially what I've told Google Sheets to do is to calculate some math for me and the formula is here. The formula is D11 divided by D10. So D11 is the sum of the values and I'm going to divide by the total number of values and that gives me this average of 83.57142857. You may want to round that down. The way we can round is going over here on the shortcut bar where you see these two options decrease decimal places or increase decimal places so I highlight that cell and I'm going to decrease the decimal places and every time I click that you'll see that it rounds a little more so now I've decreased it down to do two decimal places and we've rounded that answer to that average to 83.57 as you can see Google Sheets is a pretty powerful tool for organizing data, uh, calculating some basic descriptive statistics, creating charts and tables, and you can mess around with the formatting and the sizing and make these look pretty nice. Uh, I encourage you to play, play around with Google Sheets and uh, see what you can do with it.